Today we're going to talk about the categorical imperative and Immanuel Kant. Now Immanuel Kant was a giant of the Enlightenment and for him the most crucial aspect of being a human being was our ability to reason. It was that which made us truly human. And for him then a reasonable human being would find it his duty to behave well. Thus deontological or duty ethics. But how do you know that what you consider a duty is truly a good. Well, he came up with what he called the categorical imperative, which are three rules for determining whether something is a good deed or not. Let's look at them. Number one, the principle of universality. Read along with me. It's a little confusing, but you can get it. Act in conformity with that maxim or principle, and that maxim only which you can at the same time will to be a universal law. Something could only be a moral law if it applied to everyone. So let's say you said, I believe in slavery. Could you apply this to everyone, that everyone should be a slave, including you? I don't know of many people who would volunteer to be slaves. So, therefore, the principle of universality does not seem to apply to the concept of slavery and, therefore, would not be, on that alone, a good deed. But let's say we could apply universality to slavery. We would go to the second principle. And that principle is the principle of humanity as an end, never as a mean. Now, think back to our first chapter when we talked about motive and means and consequence. Every human action has a reason, a motive, a way of doing it, a means, and a consequence or an end. So what he's saying here is you are to act so as to use humanity, whether in your own person or in the person of another, always as an end, never as a mean. We may not use people we may not make them a means to our own end. So again, let's do slavery. If I say that you should be a slave to me, then I am using you as a means not to your good, but to mine. And so slavery again would not stand under the principle of humanity as an end and never a means. Don't use people. And finally, the principle of autonomy. I think this is the hardest one to apply to Kant correctly. We live in an age where everybody gets to do their own thing no matter what it is. But that's not what he intends here. To be autonomous is to be self-law, to be under a law unto yourself. Now here, moral laws that we obey are not imposed on us from the outside. They are the laws that we impose on ourselves. The sense of duty and the reason that we obey come from within. They are expressions of our higher selves. He would never go along with the idea that you can just do whatever feels good to you. He would say that we impose on ourselves a sense of duty as human beings to behave according to the first two principles. So it isn't just what feels good, but what is reasonable and what is an obligation as a member of the human race. It is an expression of your higher self, not your appetites or your base self. I hope this helps you understand Immanuel Kant 